Hello world, I'm Nick and I'm back with another .NET video and this time we're talking about TCP listeners. TCP listeners allow you to exchange network traffic between clients and servers and in this video I'm going to set up a TCP listener or a TCP server in a worker service which will be equipped to receive messages from a client that we all send manually and we should see those coming through in real time. But before we get into the technical aspects, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, it's a huge help and it allows me to bring you lots more .NET content. So, TCP listener. So this is what we're going to be using in this video to effectively create a TCP server. So this is going to be sitting and accepting incoming requests on a specific port, and then we're going to be able to handle that as a network stream. So we're sending raw data uh, into our server, and we're going to be able to do stuff with that. We can say send a message back. We can say if the message equals X, then do Y, all those sorts of things. So we're going to take a simple look at how you set this up. And I'm also going to create it in a .NET worker. Uh, so these are similar to the Windows services or the background applications that you've seen of old. Um, but I'll go into more detail about workers uh, a bit later on in the video. For now, let's take a look at the Microsoft documentation for TCP listener. So this is going to be uh, the lion's share of our work. And we're going to create our TCP server class. And it's going to have a lot of this content, essentially. So we're going to be creating a new TCP listener. It's going to listen on a certain port. And then it's going to have a loop in it where we're constantly looking at a stream of incoming data. And while that loop is running, we're going to be handling the incoming data. So this is part of the system.net.sockets namespace, which means it's a basic part of the .NET framework. So back in my IDE, you can see here I've got what's called a worker class. Now I've just created a worker project, and a worker is something that sits in the background. As it runs, it will be running a process over and over again. Uh, these are really good for things like long running tasks where you've got repetitive logic. So you might be calculating data and then sending that data somewhere, for example. And that might need to happen on an ongoing basis or on a schedule. But these are often silent applications. And so we're going to build one which essentially acts as a TCP server and listens for those incoming requests. So in theory, if we wanted to, we could connect to it using a TCP client. I'm going to use Putty. I'll show you that later on in the video. And we could then connect to that server and send it requests. It could also then reply to us with various different kinds of messages. So this is the basic template that you'll get when you create a worker service. Uh, so if you follow Microsoft's documentation essentially on how to create a worker in .NET, I'd say six as a minimum, but I'm using .NET 8. It doesn't really matter too much for this if you're in .NET 8 preview, but I'd say at the very least, if you're using .NET 6, you should be able to follow along with this video. When this worker starts, it will hit this execute async, which will essentially run everything inside this block. So what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate our TCP server here and then run the logic inside that class which starts the TCP server. After that, there's a while loop that runs. And so from that, we know the service is going to continue to run. As standard, the service is just going to use the logger that has been added as using dependency injection as standard. Uh, and it's going to log that it's working at the current time. So you'll see that over and over again if you were to look at the console window. Uh, but above that, we'll have that instantiated TCP server. So how do we get our TCP server working? Right, well, let's create a class for it. So I'm going to create a class called TCP server. And then I'm going to create a constructor for this. So we'll say public TCP server. Keep that empty for now. Now I want to have an instance of TCP listener always present on this class and ready to go. So I'm going to create a private instance of TCP listener. So private TCP listener that is added in the namespace. So I'm using system.net.sockets and then I can say TCP listener. And I'm just going to leave that as it is for now. And I'll actually initialize it as part of the constructor. Now, what we'll need to do when we start this TCP server class is initialize all the relevant properties for our TCP listener, as well as initializing the TCP listener itself. Now, I'd like to do that as part of its own method called start server. That because that encapsulates that initialization nicely, we can then call that start server method from the constructor. So it will always happen whenever we spin up a TCP server class. So I'm going to create a private method here, so it's going to be void. We'll call it start server. And then in here, we can say 
that our TCP listener is a new TCP listener. But we need to add a local address for it to listen on and a port. So before we do that, it's probably best that we put those into some variables. So I'm going to say var port equals, and then it can be an integer. So we'll use, uh, let's say, 13000. That's the port that I'm going to listen on. So I want this to listen on the local host address. And as an IP address, that would be 127.0.0.1. So to make that happen, I'm going to create a variable called host address, and then I'm going to use IP address dot pass, and this allows me to pass in a string for the IP address. So now I've got the port and the host address, I can pass those in. So TCP listeners constructor is expecting a local address, so I can say host address and a port. So I'll pass those in and I've got a new instance of TCP listener. Now, even though I'm in my start server method and I've instantiated a, an instance of TCP listener, that listener's not currently doing anything. So I need to call its start method. So I can say TCP listener dot start. So that will fire it up essentially. Now that still doesn't give us everything we need because we need to be able to receive data on that TCP listener. Now the TCP listener accepts data on a stream and for a stream, we need a byte array. So I'm going to create a byte array called buffer. And I'm going to use that to input our data. So I'll say byte, an array of byte. Buffer equals new byte array. And I'm going to hold 256 in that. So it will be hard-coded to 256. We also want to be able to convert that to a string that, so that we can read actual messages. So I'm going to just create a string. I'm going to call that received message. So now we've set up our TCP listener. It's started, but it's not actually listening. So you can see, even though you initialize a TCP listener, there's a few steps you have to go through in order to get it actively receiving data. So we've started it by calling the dot start method, but now I need to tell it to accept data. Now we do this by telling it to accept a TCP client. So to do this, I actually create an instance of TCP client. Now, because TCP client implements iDisposable, I want to be able to automatically dispose of it when I'm finished with it. So I'm going to use a using statement. So I'm going to call a function on the listener called accept TCP client. I'm not going to do that asynchronously. I want to block the call, uh, but essentially, calling this will create a TCP client. So by this point, that means that I'm set up with a started TCP listener and it's accepting TCP data. How do we then get the data? Well, next I want to create that stream we were talking about where we're actually receiving the data. So I'll say var TCP stream. And this will be created by saying client, so our TCP client dot get stream. And that gives us a network stream. So this TCP stream variable will be an instance of network stream. And that's where we're receiving our data. Now I'm going to create an integer here, I'm going to call it read, read total. And you'll see why shortly. Now this is the point where I want to actually read the incoming stream. And we're actually going to create a while loop to say, while there's data, then perform some actions. So within that while, we're essentially saying, if there's anything in the stream, let's get it out, let's deal with it. We'll say while, and then inside the while, we want to actually get the data out of the stream. So we're gonna say read total, which is that integer that I just created, is the result of our TCP stream. So the result of that get stream, and then we can say dot read. And then when we call read, that is essentially saying, read the stream and give me the result, it will return an integer. So if it returns zero, we know there's nothing in the stream and the while loop will close because we're going to say while well, read total is not equal zero. So the first thing this needs us to pass in is a, a byte array or a span of byte. Uh, so we can use buffer for that. Our offset is going to be zero, so we don't want to offset anything on the stream. And the maximum number of bytes we want to read is essentially all the bytes in the stream. So we just say buffer dot length. So read the full amount of bytes in the stream and close that off. And then we want to say the result of that is not equal to zero. And then close that off as well so that we get a Boolean result. And there we go. So this is essentially going to say 
uh, read the stream, put the result in read total as an integer, and if that's not zero, then we've got data that we need to pass. So right now, the data that will be coming in will just be bytes, and we want to actually be able to read that message as a human readable string. It needs to be text, right? So we're gonna convert those bytes to a string. We can do that by using encoding. I'm gonna use .utf8, it's my go-to, and then say get string, and then that will allow us to pass in uh, some bytes to convert into a string. So again, we pass in our buffer, and just like at the top of the while statement, we're not using an offset, and we'll use buffer.length as the count. And then we want to assign this to a string. So we'll say string message, or incoming message actually, equals get string and then the stream. Now we've probably done enough to be able to actually start testing it to a certain extent. So I'm gonna take this start server method, and I'm gonna place it inside the constructor. And then on our worker, I'm gonna say, before you start this, this loop that's gonna run until cancellation is requested, we want to create an instance of that TCP server that I created before. So I'll say var server equals new TCP server. And so because we've got everything in the constructor, that will immediately run start server, which will set everything up here, and we should be listening for requests. But how do we send data in? Well, we need to use a TCP client. So I'm gonna use Putty. Putty is a free application. Uh, you know, you can download it from their website, and you can use it to configure various different kinds of connections between clients and servers. So I want to connect to 127.0. one. If you remember, the port was 13000 and the connection type I want to do is raw so we want to do a raw connection into this server if I click open you can see straight away we've got a box which means we're connected to that server and actually you can see here we've hit a breakpoint because we've got incoming data I'm gonna just type in hello so there's a control character in there uh, but if I type in the word hello and press enter you can see we go inside the while loop so then if I go to the incoming message, you can see we've got hello. We've also got that control character that's gone in there as well. Um, but you get the idea, the, the string content has been passed out of the incoming stream. And we can carry on, so we can allow it to keep going. Uh, so you know we go back into our client window, and I can say, um, how are you? Send that in, and then decode that. And you can see we've got, how are you? Obviously, it's cut off some of the string there. I think that's because I need to get rid of those control characters. But again, you get the idea. We've got data coming through. How would we then reply to this? Well, it's actually quite simple. Because we've got a network stream coming in and we're just reading from that stream, in order to send a message back, we would just write to the same stream and it would be received by the client who sent the message. So I'm going to create a string response and I'm just going to say in caps success or successfully uh, connected just to send something back and then to send it I'm going to use the incoming stream again so I'm going to use that TCP stream and this time instead of reading I'm going to be writing so I'll say dot write and then I can pass in that response now obviously because that's a string that's going to be an issue uh, so I shouldn't have made that a string I actually need to make it a byte array so I can say encoding utf8 dot get bytes and then say successfully connected so then I can pass in response I've got no offset and I want it to write to the whole length of the data so again if I then run this and have it start listening so skip past this setup, go back over to Putty, set my connection back up. You can actually save these connections in Putty as well if you're doing this regularly. Put the port in, I think that's right. And then set the connection type to raw and then open. And so we'll have that initial connection If I say hello, see we go down here, we get the 
incoming response. We write it to the stream and then back on here, you can see we've got successfully connected. Now I think it actually did respond the first time we connected uh, and then it's responded again as I've sent it in. Uh, so essentially, you would manage the response based on the message that comes in. But you can see the potential for this. This is essentially how most TCP services are written. You have incoming messages, and then you pass those messages um, to decipher what action needs to be taken. So this could very well kick off another process depending on what's been sent in. You could send specific commands to the server, and then have something that handles that to say, if the command is get person, then they'll go to the database, get the relevant data, and then transmit that back as maybe structured content or maybe just a simple string. I have actually written a library which is available on my GitHub. It's called Easy TCP Server. Uh, and in that library, we do this on a basic level, but then I also have client management. So you can have multiple connections. You can keep those in a list. You can manage them. You can kick them off the server, all those different things. So if you're interested in that, then you know, feel free to go and have a look on my GitHub. But otherwise, I think we'll probably do another video at some point where we go into more of that kind of detail. And you could also potentially look at doing this in um, other kinds of applications as well. Uh, you could put this into a Blazor application or, or a web, another kind of web application or a desktop application. Or you could actually install this worker service as a Windows service and have it run constantly, facilitating any incoming data that's sent to it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do my best to give you regular .NET content and as long as I'm still getting views, I'll keep doing it. So please do join me again soon for some more great .NET content. See ya.